using ethnographic participation and documentary analysis to elucidate problems involved in teaching about the particulate nature of matter in English schools. I've been uh, a teacher for very many years. I have an honours degree in chemistry, a master's in science education, uh, CSI teach accreditation, and I'm a member of the Royal Society of Chemistry. And I taught science in secondary schools in England for 25 years. Okay, so the focus of my talk is how documentary analysis and ethnographic participation methodologies developed and matured during a qualitative PhD study. So, start with my personal interests and, and who I am. That's what led to the initial topical research. So, um, I taught, as I say, I taught for 25 years in English schools. Um, I always say English schools because, of course, the curriculum is very different or significantly different in England, Scotland and Wales. So, we're talking about the English school system here. Um, my interests had always been around the key stage three um, science and chemistry teaching. I've taught uh, GCSE and A-level chemistry, but I preferred the younger age group. Um, so my topical research was very much primary and secondary teachers, ped pedagogies, primary and secondary transition matters. So I'm very interested in the transition um, from primary school to secondary school and children's concepts of matter at different ages. And in particular, what is happening actually in schools at this current time. Um, and that led to my initial exploratory survey. And all of that led to the guiding research question. So in effect, what I've put up here is the methodological approach towards the research question which guided my research. So <clears throat> we st I started, first of all, simply looking at what happens currently in schools in England. And it is up there on the screen for, for interest. Obviously, the focus of this talk is my methodology. And so methodology spans so much. And to me, it also, you look at how you arrived at what it is that you want to research in the first place. Um, and so I was particularly interested in exactly what happens in school teaching chemistry uh, to young people. And I put up here, I will put up here my overarching research question, because I think it helps if I have positioned myself properly in this discussion. It will help you to know about exactly what, what I have been researching to understand a little bit more about the methodology behind it. So my overarching research question is does the national curriculum for science in England adequately support teachers in years five, six and seven? So that is either side of the primary to secondary transition phase. Enable pupils to gain a meaningful understanding of the nature and behaviour of matter by the time they enter key stage four. Almost as long as I have been a teacher, I have been aware of 
very significant issues with children at GCSE level who still do not have a meaningful understanding of the particle nature of matter. Um, and this became my really key interest. Initially, I used two small-scale exploratory surveys before proceeding with my final methodological, uh, methodological approach, which was an ethnographic study. My two small exploratory surveys were a sample to a sample of key stage two year five teachers and a sample of key stage three year seven teachers. And I, the aim of the survey was just to get a, a feeling um, for what, what they felt, what was going on, to inform the methodology and approaches to methodologies that I later used. And I've put up here some examples of questions used in my exploratory surveys, just to give you a feeling for it. So how often do pu practicals and teacher demonstrations occur? Do pupils plan their own investigations? And if so, how often? Do teachers use worksheets designed by them and their school or from a published scheme? Are textbooks used? Which textbooks? How often? How are they used? Do you use molecular models? Do teachers use computer-generated animations of reactions occurring? For example, those are the sorts of questions that I was interested in in the initial exploratory survey. So the methodology developed into a documentary analysis of the national curriculum document, documents uh, for key stage one and two and key stage three and ethnographic participation in classrooms in year five and year, year five in primary schools and year seven in um, secondary schools. Year five might strike you as slightly odd, but actually in the current curriculum there is no chemistry taught in year six. Make of that what you will. So the first part was a documentary analysis of the national curriculum documents at Key Stage 1 and 2, and key stage three. And then we move on to my ethnographic participation in lessons. I found Hammersley and Atkinson's definition of ethnography the most useful and I present it here. So ethnography usually involves the researcher participating overtly or covertly in people's daily lives for an extended period of time. That I think is, is a really good uh, description of methodology. So this is also from Hammersley and Atkinson. The five points that he emphasizes to me capture ethnographic participation very, very well indeed. So in the first, the first point is people's actions and accounts are studied in everyday contexts rather than solely under conditions created by the researcher as is the case with experiments or highly structured interviews. So ethnographers are trying to get as close as possible to, I hesitate to use the word reality, but at the moment I can't think of a different word. Um, 
Second point, data are gathered from a range of sources, including documentary evidence of various kinds, but participant observation and or informal conversations are usually the main ones. Data collection is for the most part relatively unstructured in two, in two senses. Firstly, it does not involve implementing a fixed and detailed research design specified at the start. Second, the categories that are used for interpreting what people say or do are not built into the data collection process, for example, through the use of observation schedules or questionnaires. Instead, they are generated out of the process of data analysis. The focus is usually on a few cases, generally small scale, perhaps a single setting or a group of people. This is to facilitate in-depth investigation. And at the end, the analysis of data involves interpretation of the meanings, sources, functions, and consequences of human actions and institutional practices and how these are implicated in local and perhaps also wider contexts. What are produced for the most part are verbal descriptions, explanations and theories. Quantification and statistical analysis play a subordinate role at most. So, how I used ethnography in my own data collection. I went into school classrooms. Uh, I went into primary school classrooms and secondary school classrooms. And I worked as a teaching assistant um, to allow me to try and get as close to, again, I use the word reality, as possible. With the pupils in the classroom, that was incredible because they simply took me as a teaching assistant. Therefore, they reacted to me as a teaching assistant. So I was able to get really close to the pupils, to what they thought, to what they understood, to their, the meanings they ascribed to things. Not quite so easy with the teacher because, of course, the teacher knew that I was a researcher. Therefore, I was very conscious that quite often the lessons that I was in, the teacher had planned very particularly because she knew or he knew uh, that I was going to be present and looking at their lessons. I did as much as I could to try and persuade the teachers in my study to disregard me um, but obviously that they would have taken a large notice of who I was and what I knew. So when analysing the data for that, I had to be very conscious for that. But it allows, ethnography allows me to discover as much as possible about what motivates and drives people's lives and actions and allows me to get, yes, as close as possible to other people's understandings of the world we live in. Gosh, Kath, I think I finished. Oops, <laughs> that wasn't quite 15 minutes. Or was it? Oh, wicked. Was that, was that real? Wait a minute, let me just uh, get back to uh, a proper view. Wait a minute. Uh, I'm going to get that out of the way. And... Oh, see machine. 
No, it doesn't matter. It's all right. I'm, I'm trying to. Let's see. It's all right. Ignore me Recording for a minute. Anyway, sorry. Hey, what? All oh, right. No, no, that's.